This passage in Scripture is probably one that the majority of you know. And to me, it is inspiring and it is very vexing. It's inspiring because this is the way that a lot of things seem to happen when God calls people to come to Him, right? A few weeks ago or a month ago, we heard the story of an angel coming to Mary and saying, you're going to have a child. And Mary said, let it be done to me according to your will. And the men have been studying Joseph. And we've been listening to how Joseph got dreams. And Joseph, in a dream, was told to take Mary as his wife. And he did it without hesitation. And then later he gets another dream where he's told to take Joseph or he's told to take Mary and Jesus and flee from where they're at into Egypt. And he gets up in the middle of the night and does it without hesitation. And here this morning we see Jesus walking down the the seashore and he calls Simon and Andrew and James and John and they drop what they're doing and they follow after him. It's inspiring, right? How many of you would leave everything behind if some strange man walked up to you and said... Come follow me. Exactly. Right? That's why it's vexing. Because these are the disciples. These are our models. These are the people that we're supposed to live our lives after. Right? We're supposed to do what they did. We're supposed to follow after Jesus. When Jesus says, come and follow me, we're supposed to drop our nets, drop whatever it is we have in our hands and give everything up. And go after Jesus. I have a feeling, though, most of us would be more like Jonah than we would be like Peter and Andrew and James and John. Right? We'd climb into wherever we could, a bus, a plane, a boat, and try to run away from God. And then, when God figures it out and causes whatever to happen to happen, and He saves us from that calamity, and if we were swallowed like a big fish like Jonah was... And then we were spit up out onto the shore again. I bet most of us, I would most definitely try to find another boat to run away again. Because that's what happens, right? That's who we are. That's our nature. And I'm here this morning to tell you that I have problems. I have problems. You can ask my wife or my children. I don't have everything all together. And when God calls me to follow Him, I have just the same hesitations that you do. Because I'm just a person like you are. There's hesitation. When I first got my call to go to seminary or to become a pastor, I was a junior in my undergrad. In college. And my first thought was, that's funny. God wants me to do what? Do you know who I am? If you can imagine it, I had long hair. Long hair. Long hair. I had long hair. I could show you pictures, but I really can't because most of them have been destroyed. Um, Proof. There's no proof. I had long hair. I was not the kind of person that you would think would be a pastor. So I laughed. And I didn't follow I ran away. And God sent a storm, as He always does, pulled us out of the calamity, and I thought, well, okay, I'm supposed to do music. So I looked for jobs in music ministry, and doors kept closing and closing and closing. And finally, we made the decision, and I say we because it wasn't just my decision, because at that point in time when when we made the decision that I was going to go to seminary, I was married, so we were a we and not an I. When we talked about it and we made the decision that we were going to go, it still wasn't over. There was still hesitation. We were still wondering how this was all going to work. How is this going to pan out and how how is this going to function? Right? That's the problem with us as humans and Jonah because Jonah knew who Nineveh was. Jonah knew who those people were. And he knew exactly how everything was going to happen. Right? You know exactly how your life is going to play out, right? You've already played it out in your mind. And it always happens that way, right? Yeah, exactly. No, it doesn't. So the plan was there. And I was wondering, and there came several times, actually, in in one point in particular, I went and I said, I don't really know if we should do this. And my wife said, I'm moving to Gettysburg whether you come with me or not. The rock 
that pulled it along and kept it going. And even beyond that, when we got to seminary and we were in a first call in Ohio and things started getting rocky and things started to happen, I wondered, what in the world have I done to my family? We moved to Texas and things happened again and I wonder again, what in the world have I done to my family? Peter and Andrew and James and John dropped their nets and left instantly without hesitation. And you know what? That's exactly what God wants us to do too. And I had a discussion a couple, yesterday actually with another pastor here in our Senate about this and how he's preaching on Jonah and, and how we should be more like Peter and Andrew and James and John than we should be like Jonah. And I said, yeah, but you have to remember, Peter, Andrew, James and John got it right at the beginning. And they dropped everything and they left and they followed Jesus. But if you keep reading the Gospel of Mark, you figure out later that they screwed things up royally just like Jonah did too. They didn't have it all together and they questioned things. Later on in, in Mark, Peter says that there's no way that Jesus can go to Jerusalem and die. It can't happen, Lord. It's not going to happen. Jesus says, does anybody know what Jesus says to Peter? Get behind me, Satan. Because Peter knew what the plan was. Peter had it all planned out in his mind. He knew what was going to happen. He knew who the Messiah was supposed to be and what was going to happen in his life and what was going to happen in the Messiah's life. But he didn't know where he was supposed to be. He wasn't looking clearly at where he needed to look. That's where we have to understand the words there. Jesus says to the disciples, follow me. And it sounds real pretty and it sounds real nice, right? Like, let's go on a walk together. Let's go on a journey thing that we have to understand, though, Jesus says to Peter, Andrew, James, and John, the exact same thing that he says to Peter later on, when Peter says, there's no way that this is the way that it's going to happen. Jesus said, get behind me. Get behind me. The words in the Greek are opiso mu. Opiso mu. Mu is me. Opiso means behind. It's not a gentle reminder or a gentle thing. Let's go on a walk. Jesus is telling Peter, Andrew, James, and John, just as he's telling each and every one of us, get your picture clear. If you can't see the back of my head, you're in the wrong place. You see, we think as disciples today that we don't have to give everything up. But every one of our readings this morning points to that. Paul talks to the Corinthians about how we're supposed to live life as if nothing else matters but Christ. And you know what? That's exactly what we are supposed to do too. And is that easy? No. Do I always get it right? No. Do you always get it right? No. But here's the great thing about all of this. Except for by the grace of God, we would not be called into his service. Except by the grace of God, we would not be saved from the life that we are in. Except by the grace of God, nothing that we have would be given to us. Except by the grace of God. This is the point in time where we can say, I can't. Teachers, how many of you like the word, I can't? I don't know many teachers, I don't know many parents that like when their kids come to them and say, I can't do this. Well, you know what? Yes, you can if you just try and work, and if you ask for help, you can do it. This is the point in time as Christians that I'm telling you you're allowed to say, I can't. And that's the perfect answer. Because you know what? I can't do this on my own. I cannot be the disciple that God has called me to be. I cannot follow Jesus the way that he's asked me to follow him. I cannot be the beacon of hope in this world that God has called me to be. I cannot do that unless God is there with me and God is leading me and guiding me. And only with God can I do anything that God has called me to do. I can't do it by myself. But with God, everything is possible. As Paul told the Philippians, I know what it is to be in want, and I know what it is to have plenty. Because no matter what happens, I can do anything that I need to do because Christ is with me and Christ is leading me. So come and follow Jesus, as the choir sang for us at the beginning. I have decided to follow Jesus. The world behind me and the cross before me. If you can't see the cross, if you can't see Jesus, 
then turn around. He's right there waiting for you. And when you do, you will be able to do great, great and wonderful things that he's put in front of you to do to show forth his love to all this world. Know that you can't do this on your own. But with God's grace, everything is absolutely possible.